This is about an uh, older video that's uh, gotten some action in the comment section in the last couple of weeks. And it's uh, by Once Forgiven, Now Free. And the title is How Wrong Are Young Earth Creationists? And it's a response, apparently, to a video that CDK007 did. Now, I watched this over again, and I noticed something about it. It's, uh, it's a problem that I've seen in a number of creationist videos and other creationist literature. And that is, they seem to have some well, difficulty with the English language. So I thought I'd respond to this. Now, evolutionary theory is, is, is a passion of mine. That and gardening and music, for the most part. But I haven't done any videos on it because there are so many other good videos out there that I didn't really think I needed anything to add, to add anything. But, uh, speaking of English, but I, th I thought I'd, uh, I wanted to respond to this. And what I did is I took his video and I typed out a transcript. And you're going to see it in the background here. And what you'll see is uh, where, where what CDK said is in black, what um, Once Forgiven Now Free said is in blue, and my answers are in green. So let's go to the uh, transcript here. CDK. Um, there we go. Wait, let me cue it up. Young Earth creationists believe everything was created in one week 6,000 years ago. Data and facts collected through the scientific method tell us otherwise. The Earth is four and a half billion years old, and the universe is even older. Once forgiven, now free. Okay, someone never studied logic here before. Uh, your claim that the world is old is not a fact, it's an interpretation of the fact. Me. Well, pay attention to what he said. He didn't say that the age of the Earth was a fact. He said that data and facts collected through the scientific method tell us that the Earth is old. Once. It could never be a fact. You weren't there. I wasn't there. No one was there. Job 38.4 says, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have an understanding. Since no one was there except God himself, how can you know for a fact how old the earth is? You can't. You'll always have to use assumptions when you try to interpret the unobservable fast. You then can state that the scientific method tells us otherwise. Okay. Let's look at what CDK said again. <clears throat> Data and facts collected through the scientific method tell us otherwise. The Earth is four and a half billion years old. He does not say that the scientific method tells us otherwise, but that data and facts tell us otherwise, and that they were collected by the scientific method. Look at the sen sentence structure of the first sentence. This is a complex sentence composed of an independent clause and a dependent clause. The independent clause is data and facts tell us otherwise. Data, facts are the nouns and are the subjects of the sentence, and is a conjunction which connects the two subjects. Tell is a verb and is the predicate of the sentence. Otherwise, here is being used as a pronoun and denotes something different in outcome. So we have data and facts tell otherwise. That's a basic part, subject, predicate, object. Now, us is a pronoun and is the indirect object of the sentence with the preposition to implied. So data and facts tell to us otherwise. And a diagram of the sentence so far looks like this. It's pretty simple, right? Now, the other part of the sentence collected by the scientific method is an adjective clause that modifies the nouns, data, and facts. Let's see how the sentence comes together. This type of sentence, an independent clause plus an adjective clause, is a result of the combination of two clauses which contain a repeated noun, or in this case, nouns, uh, namely the words data and facts. So the original sentence is data and facts collected through the scientific method. Tell us otherwise. Two independent clauses could be data and facts tell us otherwise. Data and facts are collected through the scientific method. So you take the second sentence and you replace the nouns with the pronoun. Let's use that. So data and facts tell us otherwise. That are collected through the scientific method. Then you place the second clause after the nouns because it is, is modifying the nouns. So data and facts that are collected through the scientific method tell us otherwise. And we simplify by removing the pronoun that and the auxiliary verb are, and we get data and facts are collected through the scientific method tell us otherwise, which is the original sentence. Now we've already looked at the main part of the sentence, the independent clause. So what remains is the dependent clause collected through the scientific method. 
Now this is a past participle phrase, uh, the participle verb being collected that modifies the subject's data and facts. That is, the phrase modifies the subject's data and facts. Through the scientific method is a prepositional phrase acting as an adverb to the verb collected. The scientific method is the object of the prepositional phrase. Now we can diagram the complete sentence. So if you take a look at it here, you can see going starting over at the left here, we have data and facts as the subjects, and the very top line is the independent clause, which tell otherwise, tell the verb, the predicate, otherwise the uh, object of the sentence, as the indirect object, and then collected through the scientific method, uh, which modifies data and facts. It's, it's pretty simple when you look at it. So what's happened here is uh, once forgiven now free has mistaken the object of the clause for the subject of the sentence. And just simply really pay attention to what's being said. Now let's go back to the, the transcript once. Wrong again. The scientific method does not tell us anything. Scientists do, and scientists approach the issue of the age of the Earth with naturalistic and uniformitarian biases, and then they tell us the age of the Earth. The scientific method doesn't tell us anything. The facts don't speak for themselves, and they all must all be interpreted based on starting assumptions. Let's keep going. Okay, now, repeating the scientific method doesn't tell us anything is useless since you clearly didn't understand the original sentence. Okay. CDK, and this is repeating his original sentence, data and facts collected through the scientific method tell us otherwise that the earth is four and a half billion years old. Once, here's your dogmatic claim that the earth is four and a half billion years old. If you claim that this is a fact, then you have just left science. Okay, now it should be clear by now that he doesn't claim this is a fact, but having derived from data and facts. Once, continue. Science is about testing, observing, and repeating, not dogmatic claims about the uh, unobservable facts past. And it's not a fact, but an interpretation of the facts. You have to use naturalistic and uniformitarian assumptions in order to get an age of the earth that is old. The real question is, are your naturalistic assumptions correct? It's amazing how most atheists have not bothered to question their own presuppositions. Okay, you say, not a fact, but an interpretation of the facts. Well, that's what he said. Let's look at the definitions of naturalistic and uniformitarianism, <clears throat> since these are words that are frequently used by creationists. And this is from the uh, Oxford English Dictionary. Naturalistic, of or according to the philosophy of naturalism, which is the philosophical belief that everything arises from natural properties and causes, and supernatural or spiritual explanations are excluded or discounted. Uniformitarianism, <clears throat> the theory that changes in the Earth's crust during the geological history have resulted from the action of continuous and uniform processes. A science can only measure things that are material. There is no reason to suspect that the laws of physics, chemistry, and mathematics ever change. On the contrary, there is proof that the processes currently operating in the universe have always operated that way. What would be your observable and measurable evidence to the contrary? Back to the transcript. CDK. This is not some small mistake. They're off wrong by a factor of a million, he gives examples, and once. Wait, it's you that's wrong. It's easy to be right when your worldview is based on assumptions. You simply assume that naturalism, naturalism and uniformitarianism is right, but what if we base our beliefs on the age of the earth on facts instead of assumptions? For example, we can test the age of rocks that we already know the data, because we were there when they were formed. <clears throat> okay, now aside here. I'm probably going to start massacring pronunciation, so I would like to apologize to all of those of you who actually know how these things are pronounced. Back to the transcript. What about Mount Nagaraho in New Zealand? Lava flows from 1975 dated at 1 million years old. Rocks from 1954 dated at 1.5 million years old. Or how about Mount St. Helens? Maybe you should look into that one yourself. It will surprise you what you find. Are these isolated cases? No, they're not. Even Dalrymple, who's, I probably butchered his name, but he's one of the big names in radioactive dating and also an atheist, he lists a number of wrong dates from Hualali in Hawaii, which gives ages of approximately 1.5 million years old, when the actual date is around 200 years old. Uh, Etna, Mount Lassen, Sunset Crater, the list goes on. 
the dating method doesn't work. When we know the age of the rock, because we were there when the rock was formed, radiometric dating doesn't work. Yet for some reason, when we don't know the age of the rock, because we weren't there, you want to assume that radiometric dating works. Strange, isn't it? You are the one that's off by a factor of a man. <clears throat> well, you show Dalrymple's book, and it would be nice if you'd actually read it. And I have it right here, and I have read it. But let's see um, where you got this information. This list of, of, of volcanoes is very specific, so it appears that this comes from Answers in Genesis, and here's a screenshot from the appropriate web page. And I'll put a link to this below, and I really would like everyone to go and take a look at the, at the chart of um, of the wrong dates that they have for, for these volcanoes on this on this page. And the title of this piece is More and More Wrong Dates. And you'll notice that there are references Dalrymple, GB, Argon 40, Argon 36, Analysis of Historic Lava Flows, Earth, and Planetary Science Letters, Volume 6, pages 47 to 55, 1969. Now it so happens that I have a copy of that article, so let's compare the table in the Dalrymple article with the table found in Answers in Genesis. So on the upper left here is uh, the table from Answers in Genesis, and to the right, well, the larger table is the one that actually comes from the Dalrymple article and where they say they got their data. So let's look at this. You can see the, the connections are in red here. Uh, potassium argon age, Kualali 1.60, uh, million, this is millions of years, 1.41 millions of years, and you go over to the Dalrymple um, chart and it says Kualali 1.60, 1.41, but wait, uh, look up a little bit. That's not the age, <laughs> that's the, the quantity of the material in moles per gram. <laughs> the age is over here to the right. It's actually 1.19 and 1.05 million years. I copied from the wrong column. All of this data that is their ages of the Earth are actually the quantities of uh, of material. Let's look. Let's look a little closer in case that um, that graphic isn't very clear. Here's Mount Hualali again. They have it as 1.60, 1.41 actual dates. 1.19, 1.05, and and we've got Mount Etna. They've got two lava flows here, and 0 0.25, 0 0.35. But look at the actual ages. What they have down for the ages are two and a half and two and a third times the actual age, because they copied from the wrong column. How many times has this erroneous information been repeated in creationist literature? It's simply passed on and on without anyone questioning it trying to detect the original data. I mean, come on! They couldn't even copy the, 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 the data right. How could you believe anything when they, some idiot can't even copy from the right column? Now, Dalrymple discusses excess argon in his book. And the one you showed a picture of. And let me quote from it here. And this is from, um, well, it's actually the very bottom of page 132. And then it goes on to page 133. And it refers to some of these flows here. Three of the flows gave ratios of argon 40, argon 36, that were demonstrably greater than the atmospheric value of 295.5. In two of these flows, Sunset Crater and Mount Etna, the amounts of excess argon-40 were small, and the apparent ages were only on the order of 10 to the 5th years. These amounts would not introduce serious errors, except in the dating of rocks less than a few million years old. The 1801 flow from Hualali, however, gave an apparent age of more than 1 million years. It is probably significant that all three of these flows contain ultramafic xenoliths. In fact, the Hualali flow is well known for the abundance and variety of its inclusions. These xenoliths frequently give potassium argon ages in excess of 1 billion years. J.G. Funkhauser, University of Hawaii, PhD thesis, 1966. In addition, the olivine crystals in these xenoliths contain fluid inclusions or bubbles that have been shown to contain large quantities of excess argon 40. Although fluid inclusions are not apparent in the flows from Sunset Crater and Mount Etna, 
It may be that the excess argon-40 in some way is connected with the ultramathic xenoliths and xenochris. As it will be discussed later in this chapter, inherited argon-40 is much more of a problem in volcanic rocks than is excess argon-40. Okay. Now there's no dis well, there was no discussion about last in the book that I could find it, it at least not at this point, but we'll get into that in. Uh, but what about Mount St. Helens? Well, again, I'm going to look, uh, refer to answers in Genesis, and uh, because apparently Steve Austin went and did some research there. And I'll give you the link below. <clears throat> the article is called Radio Dating and Rubble, the Lava Dome at Mount St. Helens Debunks Dating Methods. It states here that in June of 1992, Dr. Austin collected a 7 kilogram, 15 pound block of dacite from high on the lava dome. A portion of this sample was crushed and milled into a fine powder. Another piece was crushed and the various mineral crystals were carefully separated out. The whole rock, rock powder and four mineral concentrates were submitted for potassium, argon analysis, etc. Now we're getting further from my comfort zone here. <clears throat> the um, book on, you know, radiometric dating. This deals a lot more with, you know, physics, chemistry, and, and math, and I'm more comfortable there. And um, so I'm not going to go too far into this. This is the province of someone like Wildwood Clare, uh, who actually understands geology. But since I've come this far in my research, I thought I'd, I'd look around just a bit more to begin with, what is Dacite? Well, I decided to check Wikipedia. And I know Wikipedia is not the greatest reference, but it's it's a good place to start, and you can always check the um, references at the bottom. But and remember, I'm, I'm just sort of skimming the surface here, kind of looking around. Because if I can look around, anybody can look around. And it says, the part I was most interested in says, Dacite consists mostly of plagioclase, feldspar with da 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 Well, Dalrymple's book was written long before Mount St. Helens erupted, but I wondered if I could get a hint if I looked up plagioclase and feldspar. And I'm proud of murdering pronunciations here as well. So, I did. And I found on page 129 of Dalrymple's book this uh, sentence. Plagioclase from the 1915 Dacite flow of Mount Lassen, California. So here's Mount Lassen. Gave an argon-40, argon-36 ratio of 309.1, indicating about 1.1 times 10 to the negative 13 mole per gram of excess argon-40, an apparent age of 125,000 years. Apparently missed Mount Lassen when I, I read through it first, uh, or at least couldn't remember where it was. So... If there's excess argon and dacite from Mount Lassen, I wouldn't be surprised to find excess argon and dacite from Mount St. Helens. Of course, this is simplistic. Uh, first of all, geology, not my strong suit. Uh, but I've read Dalrymple, and I, and I know there's a lot more going on here, too. Uh, and as I said, a geologist could explain it further, so I've, I, I'm not going to go any further with my expert speculation on dacite. But I do want to quote uh, Dalrymple on uh, why there's excess argon. Oops. Well, I lost my place here, wouldn't you know it, in the book. So, but while I'm, I'm looking for the place that, that where I want to talk about this, I, I do want to uh, mention a couple of things here, too. Because, you know, um, what they're doing here is, is they're basically picking out just a few pieces of information and from that, from these few, um, you know, inexpert, um, I mean, from these few, uh, you know, uh, I, I could, language is, is leaving me now, uh, from these few times where they found excess argon, they're, they're building a whole case out of just, just a few examples here. Okay. And that's just to begin with. But let's, let's look at the, what it says here in the book. Excess argon-40. Any excess argon-40 is radiogenic argon-40 that is incorporated into the mineral lattice during or after formation of the rock. There are a number of well-documented examples of excess argon-40, and there can be no doubt that it occurs, although infrequently. For a more complete discussion, see Chapter 8, which is where I, I took those other quotes. Inherited contamination argon-40. Inherited contamination argon-40 is due to contamination by older inclusions. This is most serious in younger rocks, but the effect depends on the amount, composition, and age of the contamination as well as the age of the sample. Inherited contamination argon-40 is a serious and continual problem in dating ash flow tufts because of their turbulent emplacement. 
older contaminating material also can be introduced into a sample at the time of crushing and mineral separation is not taken. Um, so as you can see, one of the things you used to talk about is first of all you have a problem in younger rocks and you also have a problem with uh, inclusions and contamination by older rocks. So uh, the other thing I'd like to say here is that you know, scientists don't use one method uh, of radiometric dating. They look at, they don't grab a rock and say, oh, I'm going to measure this way, argon, and now I know how old it is. They use other methods of dating, and they compare them all. Now, anyone who's ever worked in a lab, especially, you know, if you took chemistry and you're in a chemistry lab, and you're trying to find out what something is, uh, you know, maybe using a titration or something, you use different methods and from doing these different methods you compare the results and that's how you find out what it is you have. I have a, a real feeling that a lot of these people who keep repeating this this material from Answers in Genesis and the Institute for Creation Research have never been anywhere near a science lab. Uh, the other thing too is that as good as Dalrymple is uh, both his book and his article are from 1969 it's now 2012. I remember 1969. I was 19 in 1969 and it was a long time ago and I don't know what the state of the art of argon dating is today but I'm sure they know a lot more now than they did back then and again this is something where you need to go to a geologist to find out something like this. I gone as far as I can go here. Okay, let's go back to the um, the transcript once. I can play that game too. Believing that radiometric dating works is like believing that your nose is 27 feet long. It's like believing your brain is smaller than head of a pin. See, whether it's faulty radiometric dating method, dinosaur soft tissue, car comets or carbon-14 and diamonds, the facts must all be explained away and twisted in order to fit your time scale of billions of years. It's like believing that your mama weighed 145,000 pounds. Well, that's... Okay. Now, I'm not going to take the time to go into this, but here's an abstract of a paper written by Dr. Mary Schweitzer on soft tissue. You might want to read the whole paper. It's available online. Soft tissue doesn't mean what you think it means. And Dr. Schweitzer is the one who's really made inroads into this. She... It's partly not so much because they're... they're weren't these elements there before, but nobody looked for them because they didn't really expect them to see them. Uh, and Dr. Schweitzer's written some other excellent papers as well, including one that explains the so-called blood found in dinosaur bones, and no blood was found in dinosaur bones. It's another case of creationists taking information and um, wildly exaggerating it. Now, the subject of carbon-14 and diamonds have been covered in other videos, easy to look up. But if you're using the data from the Institute for Creation Research, which I wouldn't doubt, uh, you need to look at this, uh, read the article from Talk Origins, because they, apparently the, this wasn't done as, as well as it could have. And I've copied the basic information here, and I'll, I'll give the links below. Okay. And back to the transcript, CD cases, do your part to fight this battle against ignorance. And once replies, the only ignorance is found in the ones who only knows one side of the story. As Psalm 18.7 says, the first to present his case seems right, till another comes forward and questions him. Evolution is always defended with mockery, ridicule, and ad hominem attacks. It's the only scientific theory that requires laws to protect it and keep the opposing evidence out of the textbooks. Okay. There are no laws that protect evolution. There is a law that prevents the teaching of religion in the classroom. This is the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. And in Kitzmiller v. Dover, it was ruled that teaching intelligent design, which is just a rehash of creation science, which is a religious doctrine, was ruled unconstitutional under this. And once. I could keep going, but enough said. Now, the last graphic he shows is the following quote from John 8.32, and it says, Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, I couldn't agree more. 
What I see here is someone parroting answers in Genesis itself, a vile deception being perpetrated on gullible folks by people who couldn't give a flying frog about the truth and only seek to protect, perpetrate, and impose their own particular and peculiar interpretation to the Holy Bible. Specifically the Old Testament, a work that no one takes literally, no matter what they tell you. To begin with, we no longer enslave our neighbors. Now tell me you don't eat pork, don't wear mixed fibers, keep the laws of purity, etc., and maybe I'll listen to you. And if you try to tell me those parts of the Bible only refer to the Jews, well, then I guess only Jews can't be gay. There is no consensus amongst those who believe in the Old Testament as to which parts are historical, which are allegorical, which refer only to the ancient Jews or Israelites, and which are meant to be taken literally. So don't give me your version of biblical truth as an excuse to deny science. Do your own research, don't regurgitate what others write, and for goodness sake, pick up a grammar book. Thanks for listening.